Chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. Of Catina Aria, Gospel of St. Mark, by St. Thomas Aquinas. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there should be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can whiten them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more, save Jesus only with themselves. Pseudo Jerome. After the consummation of the cross, the glory of the resurrection is shown, and they who were to see with their own eyes the glory of the resurrection to come might not fear the shame of the cross. Wherefore it is said, And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and led them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. Chrysostom Luke in saying, after eight days, does not contradict this, for he reckoned in both the day on which Christ had spoken, what goes before, and the day on which he took them up. And the reason that he took them up after six days was that they might be filled with a more eager desire during the space of these days, and with a watchful and anxious mind attend to what they saw. Theophylact, and he takes with him the three chiefs of the apostles, Peter as confessing and loving him, John as the beloved one, James as being sublime in speech and as a divine. For so displeasing was he to the Jews, that Herod wishing to please the Jews slew him. Pseudo Chrysostom, he does not, however, show his glory in a house, but he takes them up into a high mountain, for the loftiness of the mountain was adapted to showing forth the loftiness of his glory. Theophylact, and he took them apart, because he was about to reveal mysteries to them. We must also understand, by transfiguration, not the chains of his features, but that whilst his features remained as before, there was added unto him a certain ineffable brightness. Pseudo Chrysostom. It is not therefore fitting that, in the kingdom of God, any change of feature should take place, either in the Savior himself, or in those who are to be made like unto him, but only an addition of brightness. Bede, our Savior then, when transfigured, did not lose the substance of real flesh, but showed forth the glory of his own, or our future resurrection. For such as he then appeared to the apostles, he will after the adjudgment appear to all his elect. It goes on, and his raiment became shining. Gregory, because in the height of the brightness of heaven above, they who shine in righteousness of life will cling to him. For by the name of garments, he means the just whom he joins to himself. There follows, and there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Chrysostom, he brings Moses and Elias before them, first indeed because the multitude said that Christ was Elias and one of the prophets, he shows himself to the apostles with them, that they might see the difference between the Lord and his servants. And again, because the Jews accused Christ of transgressing the law and thought him a blasphemer, as if he arrogated to himself the glory of his Father, he brought before them those who shone conspicuous in both ways. For Moses gave the law, and Elias was zealous for the glory of God, for which reason neither would have stood near him if he had been opposed to God and to his law, and that they might know that he holds the power of life and of death, he brings before them both Moses who was dead and Elias who had not yet suffered death. 
Furthermore, he signified by this that the doctrine of the prophets was the schoolmaster to the doctrine of Christ. He also signified the junction of the New and Old Testament, and that the apostles shall be joined in the resurrection with the prophets, and both together shall go forth to meet their common king. It goes on, And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Bede. If the transfigured humanity of Christ and the society of but two saints, seen for a moment, could confer delight to such a degree that Peter would, even by serving them, stay their departure, how great a happiness will it be to enjoy the vision of deity amidst choirs of angels forever? It goes on, for he wist not what to say. Although, however, Peter from the stupor of human frailty knew not what to say, still he gives a proof of the feelings which were within him. For the cause of his not knowing what to say was his forgetting that the kingdom was promised to the saints by the Lord, not in any earthly vision, but in heaven. He did not remember that he and his fellow apostles were still hemmed in by mortal flesh and could not bear the state of a mortal life to which his soul had already carried him away, because in our Father's house in heaven, a house made with hands is not needed. But again, even up to this time, he is pointed at, as an ignorant man who wishes to make three tabernacles for the law, the prophets, and the gospel, since they in no way can be separated from each other. Chrysostom. Again, Peter neither comprehended that the Lord worked his transfiguration for the showing forth of his true glory, nor that he did this in order to teach men, nor that it was impossible for them to leave the multitude and dwell on the mountain. It goes on, for they were sore afraid. But this fear of theirs was one by which they were raised from their usual state of mind to one higher, and they recognized that those who appeared to them were Moses and Elias. The soul also was drawn on to a state of heavenly feeling, as though carried away from human sense by the heavenly vision. Theophylact, or else Peter fearing to come down from the mount, because he had now a presentiment that Christ must be crucified, said, It is good for us to be here, and not to go down there, that is, in the midst of the Jews. But if they who are furious against thee come hither, we have Moses, who beat down the Egyptians. We have also Elias, who brought fire down from heaven and destroyed the five hundred. Origin. Mark says in his own person, for he wist not what to say. Where it is matter for consideration, whether perchance Peter spoke this in the confusion of his mind, by the motion of a spirit not his own, whether perchance that spirit himself who wished, as far as in him lay, to be a stumbling block to Christ, so that he might shrink from that passion, which was the saving of all men, did not here work as a seducer, and wish under the color of good to prevent Christ from condescending to men, from coming to them and taking death upon himself for their sakes. Bede, now because Peter sought for a material tabernacle, he was covered with the shadow of the cloud, that he might learn that in the resurrection they are to be protected, not by the covering of houses, but by the glory of the Holy Ghost. Wherefore it goes on, there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and the reason why they obtained no answer from the Lord was that they asked unadvisedly. But the Father answered for the Son, wherefore there follows, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Chrysostom the voice proceeded from a cloud in which God is wont to appear, that they might believe that the voice was sent forth from God. But in that he says, This is my beloved Son, he declares that the will of the Father and the Son is one, and that, save in that he is the Son, he is in all things one with him who begot him. Bede. He then, whose preaching as Moses foretold, every soul that wished to be saved, should hear when he came in the flesh, he now come in the flesh is proclaimed by God, the Father to the disciples, as the one whom they were to hear. There follows, and suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more, 
save Jesus only with themselves. For as soon as the Son was proclaimed, that once the servants disappeared, lest the voice of the Father should seem to have been sent forth to them. Theophylact, again mystically after the end of this world, which was made in six days, Jesus will take us up, if we be his disciples, into an high mountain, that is, into heaven, where we shall see his exceeding glory. Bede, and by the garments of the Lord are meant his saints, who will shine with a new whiteness. By the fuller we must understand him to whom the psalmist says, Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For he cannot give to his faithful ones upon the earth that glory which remains laid up for them in heaven. Rigmigius, or else by the fuller are meant holy preachers and purifiers of the soul, none of whom in this life can so live as not to be stained with some spots of sin. But in the coming resurrection all the saints shall be purged from every stain of sin. Therefore the Lord will make them such as neither they themselves, by taking vengeance on their own members, nor any preacher by his example and doctrine can make. Chrysostom, or else white garments are the writings of evangelists and apostles, the like to which no interpreter can frame. Origen, or else fullers upon earth may be, by a mortal interpretation, considered to be the wise of this world, who are thought to adorn even their foul understandings and doctrines with a false whitening drawn from their own minds. But their skill as fullers could not produce anything like a discourse which shows forth the brightness of spiritual conceptions in the unpolished words of Scripture, which by many are despised. Bede, Moses and Elias, of whom one, as we read, died, the other was carried away to heaven, signify the coming glory of all the saints, that is, of all who in the judgment time are either to be found alive in the flesh or to be raised up from that death of which they tasted, and who are all equally to reign with him. Theophylact, or else it means that we are to see in glory both the law and the prophets speaking with him. That is, we shall then find that all those things which were spoken of him by Moses and the other prophets agree with the reality. Then too we shall hear the voice of the Father, revealing to us the Son of the Father, and saying, This is my beloved Son, and the cloud, that is, the Holy Ghost, the fount of truth, will overshadow us. Bede, and we must observe that, as when the Lord was baptized in Jordan, so on the mountain covered with brightness, the whole mystery of the Holy Trinity is declared, because we shall see in the resurrection that glory of the Trinity which we believers confess in baptism, and shall praise it all together. Nor is it without reason that the Holy Ghost appeared here in a bright cloud, there in the form of a dove, because he who now with a simple heart keeps the faith which he hath embraced shall then contemplate what he had believed with the brightness of open vision. But when the voice had been heard over the sun, he was found himself alone, because when he shall have manifested himself to his elect, God shall be all in all. Yea, Christ with his own, as the head with the body shall shine through all things. Verses 9-13 through 13. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were raised from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things. But how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. Origen. After the showing of the mystery on the mount, the Lord commanded his disciples, as they were coming down from the mount, not to reveal his transfiguration before the glory of his passion and resurrection. Wherefore it is said, and as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen, till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. Chrysostom, where he not only orders them to be silent, but mentioning his passion, he implies the cause why they were to be silent. 
Theophylact, which he did lest men should be offended, hearing such glorious things of him, whom they were about to see crucified. It was not therefore fitting to say such things of Christ before he suffered, but after his resurrection they were likely to be believed. So Chrysostom. But they, being ignorant of the mystery of the resurrection, took hold of that saying, and disputed one with another. Wherefore there follows, and they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. Pseudo Jerome. This, which is particular to Mark, means that when death shall have been swallowed up in victory, we shall have no memory for the former things. It goes on, and they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elias must first come? Chrysostom. The design of the disciples in asking this question seems to me to be this. We indeed have seen Elias with thee, and have seen thee before seeing Elias. But the scribes say that Elias cometh first. We therefore believe that they have lied. Bede. Or thus, the disciples thought that the charge which they had seen in him in the mount was his transformation to glory. And they say, If thou hast already come in glory, wherefore doth not thy forerunner appear, chiefly because they had seen Elias go away. Chrysostom. But what Christ answered to this is seen by what follows. And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things, in which he shows that Elias will come before his second advent. For the scriptures declare two advents of Christ, namely one which has taken place, and another which is to come. But the Lord asserts that Elias is the forerunner of the second advent. Bede. Again, he will restore all things. That is, to say, those things which Malachi points out, saying, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. He will yield up also to death that debt, which by his prolonged life he has delayed to render. Theophylact. Now the Lord puts this forward to oppose the notion of the Pharisees, who held that Elias was the forerunner of the first advent, showing that it led them to a false conclusion. Wherefore he subjoins, And how is it written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught? As if he had said, When Elias the Tishbite cometh, he will pacify the Jews, and will bring them to the faith, and thus be the forerunner of the second advent. If then Elias is the forerunner of the first advent, how is it written that the Son of Man must suffer? One of these two things therefore will follow, either that Elias is not the forerunner of the first advent, and thus the scripture will be true, or that he is the forerunner of the first advent, and then the scriptures will not be true, which say that Christ must suffer, for Elias must restore all things, in which case there will not be an unbelieving Jew, but all whosoever hear him must believe on his preaching. Bede, or this, how is it written, that is, in the same way as the prophets have written many things in various places concerning the passion of Christ, Elias also, when he comes, is to suffer many things, and to be despised by the wicked. Chrysostom. Now as the Lord asserted that Elias was to be the forerunner of the second advent, so consequently he asserted that John was the forerunner of the first. Wherefore he subjoins, But I say unto you that Elias is indeed come. Gloss. He calls John Elias, not because he was Elias in person, but because he fulfilled the ministry of Elias. For as the latter will be the forerunner of the second advent, so the former has been that of the first. Theophylact. For again John rebuked vice, and was a zealous man and a hermit like Elias. But they heard him not, as they will hear Elias, but killed him in wicked sport and cut off his head. Wherefore there follows, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him, Pseudo Chrysostom. Or else the disciples asked Jesus how it was written that the Son of Man must suffer. Now in answer to this, he says, As John came in the likeness of Elias, and they evil entreated him, so according to the scriptures must the Son of Man suffer. End of chapter 9, verses 1 through 13.